So mainly, the ischemic heart disease is basically caused due to the coronary atherosclerosis. Then the hypertensive heart diseases, it's the secondary cause and the uh, main cause, most of the popular or the leading causes um, of the ischemic heart diseases. Then we have the aortic valve diseases and moreover, it can be a genetic aortic valve disease or it can be an acquired condition. Both of them are basically part and parcel over here. Um, anomalies of coronary circulation, they are again considered. Uh, there can be a different modalities in different individuals they are observed. It can be a by birth defect or an acquired condition or acquired malformation. Uh, then we can have other coronary artery diseases. For example, polyarthritis is basically an infectious state uh, of the coronary vasculature that can, least, uh, that can lead to a compromised vasculature. It's again going to basically uh, form a defunctioning of the cardiac muscle and that is, that is how it is going to complicate the situation. Cardiomyopathic enlargements, they're again considered as one of the complications um, and one of the underlying causes for the ischemic heart diseases. And we can have some congenital heart diseases. It can basically variate from the aortic valve diseases to some other malformations of the cardiac muscles that can contribute towards such a ischemic heart disease condition. So basically in this diagram you can see uh, there are there can be the fatty deposits in the coronary vasculature and that is going to basically compromise the blood flow to the cardiac muscle. So the staging is again very important. How do you stage this condition of atherosclerosis? First of all, it's basically the pathological intimal thickening. So that is the, um, uh, that is the underlying pathology over here. There's an intimal thickening observed. Uh, moreover, there is a loose lipid-rich fibrous tissue and there is no lipid core if you observe the vasculature even under the microscope or even on the gross examination, there will be no lipid core over here. Then we can have a fibrous cap atheromas. It's basically the second stage or a more advanced stage of the disease in which we have a definitive lipid core and there will be a thick multi-layered cap of the fibrous tissues. Uh, we'll have a limited or patchy calcification along with it and the lymphocytic infiltrates are observed at this level. Moving on, we have the third stage or an even more advanced stage over here that is basically the thin fibrous cap atheromatous stage that uh, in which we have the lipid core along with it, we have a thin inflamed fibrous cap along with it. So. There are a lot of complications that can occur after the staging phenomena and after the atheromatous plaque has been formed. The plaque, first of all, can rupture. It is one of the complications that can, it, uh, that can occur at this level. The rupture of the fibrous cap, uh, cap can take place. It can be an isolated um, associated thrombus formation as well. So if there is a plaque rupture, any of these two conditions can occur. Either it can be rupture of the fibrous cap or it can be the associated thrombus formation. If we have a plaque erosion, the plaque is eroded on its outside or on its external surface, then the ulceration of the endothelial lining basically takes place. It can be a thrombus formation and in early lesions, pathological intimal thickening occurs.